cotton. Men have been spinning its fibers to make yarn and weaving the yarn into cloth for 7,000 years and more. Cotton, grown by the earliest civilizations of the Mediterranean and Middle East. Today, a major crop in the Americas, China, India, Russia, Egypt and Africa, both East Africa and West. Nigeria, a few degrees north of the equator, a land moving from the humid heat of the Gulf of Guinea to the hot, dry fringes of the Sahara. On these northern plains, dust dry for half the year, are cattle herded from place to place in search of grazing by the nomadic Fulani. In villages of dried mud, corn stalks and thatch live the Hausa, farmers who cultivate the traditional food crops, yams, guinea corn, groundnuts and sugar cane. But more comes from the land than food for the farmer and his family. At government laboratories, much time is devoted to cash crops, and in particular, to cotton. When we think of cotton, we think of the ripened bowl, the fibre we spin into cloth. But the bowl also contains a seed, and the seed yields an edible oil. This oil is of increasing importance, even though the regular length and strength of the fibres, their suitability for spinning, must still be the first consideration. Batches of seed are prepared for trial plantings. First, being stripped of the fuzz, which remains after the long fibres have been removed. The seed can then pass easily through the drill. In the fields of the Research Institute, planting is done by machine. Even though, in Nigeria, agricultural machinery is still a rarity. But even where cultivation methods remain traditional, the research worker's knowledge can combine to good effect with the farmer's instinctive understanding of the land by the issue of tested cottonseed together with a supply of chemical fertilizers. Sowing takes place in July or August, after the early rains have enabled farmers to cultivate their food crops. The ground is raised into ridges. Then fertilizer is sprinkled into the furrows. The soil is then turned back, reversing the pattern of ridge and furrow. The seed is sown on the ridges whose sloping sides warm quickly to the sun, speeding germination. Shortly after planting, the main wet season begins. Up to a thousand millimetres of rain, twice the average rainfall of London or Paris, may fall in one year. But the sun soon dries out the topsoil after each downpour, leaving a hard crust. Hoeing breaks this crust, aerating the soil and helping the young plants to come through. The plants are thinned, and those remaining are fertilized once again. During the rainy months of July and August, growth is rapid. The short-lived flowers appear, which will become the seed pods known as bolls. And at this time, insect damage is most likely unless precautions are taken. The 
bowl ripens and bursts and the close packed fibers dry in the sun. The entire landscape has changed. In the dry mounting heat, all greenness disappears. And in the brown and dusty fields, harvest begins. Alongside the fields, the cotton is collected, examined and sorted. Twigs and bits of leaf removed. Dirty or tangled fibers rejected. When the cotton gets to market, this will make a lot of difference to the price. In the small villages, protected from the blazing sun by screens of cornstalks, are the cotton markets. For three or four weeks of the year, a hubbub of noise and apparent confusion. <laughs> Under the eye of an official, the cotton is inspected and graded. Each grade priced in accordance with a scale fixed by government order. The verdict given, the farmer takes his cotton to one of the buying agents. Within a few weeks, the whole of the year's crop will have passed this way and the market will close, leaving only a patch of trampled earth and a few puffs of cotton lint blowing in the breeze. The farmers have grown the cotton and sold it. Now it's industry's turn to transform the crop into two distinct products. So far, fiber and seed are still together and to separate them, the machine takes over. The machine is called a cotton gin, and the factory a ginnery. American terms, reminders of the early steam-driven engines which were used for this work. Free from the seed, which originally comprised two-thirds of its weight, the cotton is now feather light and not easy to control. Fiber is still the main reason for growing cotton. The seed, for so long just discarded, is today one of the most important contributions to another industry, the vegetable oil industry, on which much of the world's food supply now depends. For cotton seed is more than the means of growing a new cotton plant. 15 to 25 percent of the weight of the seed is pure oil. Oil for margarine, cooking fats and salad dressings. And the residue, the meal left when the oil has been expressed, is an important ingredient in animal feeding stuffs. Eight hundred miles south of the cotton fields is the port of Lagos, 
from there, the seed will go to the oil mills and food factories across the world. Thousands of years, man has grown cotton and spun its fibers. For centuries, the food value of the seed was unrecognized. But during the last 50 years, cotton seed has become the world's second largest source of vegetable oil, the once neglected byproduct of an ancient industry. Now producing oil in abundance, contributing to the food supplies of the world. Thank <laughs> you. 